Amen. Amen. Reading from the New King James Translation, you will find these words. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus, that you were enriched in everything by him in all utterance and all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. I just read from Paul's first epistle to the Corinthians, the first chapter, the third through the ninth verses. The word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the word of God. We're going to ask Reverend Joseph King to come at this time to lead us to the throne of grace. Father God, we come this morning thanking you for another day, John. While we slept and slumber last evening, oh Lord God, thou wish to then early this morning, oh Lord God, you turn us with your divine spirit and our eyes open one more time. Father, we come this morning with a bereaved heart, but Lord, have mercy. Father, we come asking you to look down on the bereaved family, the sick and the shitty. Father God, I realize there's no sickness that heaven cannot heal. Yeah. And Father, we need a church from heaven right now. Yeah. If you touch everything, I'll be all right. Oh, yeah. Father God, touch my ear that I might hear your word. Yeah. Touch my heart, Father God, that I may receive your word. Yeah. And Father, let me walk in a pain pass. Yeah. Somebody here, Father God, need a church from heaven. If you would church, everything would be all right. Somebody bought it, Father, feeble this morning. If you would church, everything would be all right. Somebody crying out, Father God, behind the wall, saying, Lord, have mercy. Lord, Father God, I, I realize that mercy will cause you to stop in your crack. Mercy will cause you to heal the sick. Father God, we need you right now. In time like these. Father God, we ask you not only to cover your skin, but this whole world, Father, need a blood covering. We need you right now. Father God, we know, don't ask you this cover Bethel, but every church open, Lord. Let the man you call and preach your word will be able to, to feed your people your spiritual word. Yes. For we need it in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, yes. We do pray in the whole mother too says, Amen, 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 amen. and Amen. amen. Clothed in majesty, 
Let all the earth rejoice. Let all the earth rejoice. He wrapped himself in life. And darkness tries to hide. And trembles at his voice. And trembles at his voice. tests don't cover everything yet, but if you think you've been exposed, if you've been around anybody that's been exposed, if you think you've been exposed, you need to get tested. Amen. You know, I'm, maybe I'm putting a prophet hat on here, but I foresee a time that we're going to be testing quite frequently. Amen. You know, when you're in a place and you walk by, because you know some folk don't want to wear a mask, they sneeze, you're going to come home and test. Amen. You know, so please, sir, please, ma'am. I know some people are saying, Rev, you're being awful paranoid here. Maybe so. But we have these items available to us. We want your ministries to be long and productive. Amen. We want you healthy. We want our children healthy. And we want to do everything that we can to protect ourselves. So please, sir, please, ma'am, let's be careful. You know, uh, because we don't want to live in fear. And in order not to live in fear, we need to do everything that we can to protect ourselves. Amen? Amen. 
Amen. We are glad that God has brought us into this new year. Amen. Some, some didn't make it. Some just got over and went home. You know, I was I was shocked to hear that Sydney Party was called home the other day. And we thank God for his life. We thank God for his contributions. And not only him, but all of those that we've had the opportunity to interact with, love, to uh, lift up from afar that God has called home. It reminds us that your time here is limited. And I know, I know, Rev, I, I got a lot of living to do. I agree with you. I got a lot of living to do too. But I also know I got to leave here. Amen. And if you got to go home, you don't want to be prolonged in the journey unnecessarily. You do everything you need to do while you're out there because you know that the time will come, that the Lord will call, and we will answer. That's the season that we're in. So please, sir, please, ma'am, let us be mindful of that, which uh, puts us in a situation and we got a lot of work to do. We got a long way to go. Short time to get there. Amen. So let us do what we need to do. Let us keep our community lifted up in prayer. We have some unique challenges facing us in this season. And uh, I, I'm convinced that some of the mess that we get in is because we made bad decisions mm -hmm. and that we won't turn it over and let God fix it. So I'm asking you to join in prayer with me as we lift up our community, we lift up our state, we lift up our Congress, our president, our nation, because I believe, as the Bible says, that God said if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. And seek my face and turn from their wicked ways that God will hear from heaven he will forgive our sin and he will heal the land so let us remain prayerful this afternoon at three o'clock uh, we will be installing our new officers uh, for the coming term for the Macon County Ministers Council and we will uh, uh, install, for the first time in the history of the Minister's Council, a female pastor. Amen. And um, amen. Amen. Pastor Katrina Love. And we want you to pray for her, that God will give her wisdom, lead her, and guide her in the seasons that face us. Uh, so this afternoon at 3 o'clock, we will have a, a brief installation service. Uh, we will be hosting it here at Bethel, but it will be broadcast on Facebook Live, so there will be a virtual installation. But we ask and solicit for your prayers that we may go forth and do the work that God has called us to do. Let us remember those on our sick list. Let us remember our bereaved families. Let's keep Sister Brenda Brown lifted up in our prayers. And we're praying for her healing. Let us keep the family of Sister Betty Johnson lifted up in our prayers. And remind them that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. Because I'm convinced that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. So that's all I have right now. So, Brother Preston.
Some people doubt the Lord And they don't believe in His Word They will even try to make you think God is dead Oh, thank the Lord Corinthians. Paul said to the church in Corinth that in everything ye are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge. That in everything you are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge. I want to speak briefly this morning from the topic, and all things enriched by him, and all things enriched by him. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we give you glory and we thank you. We thank you for bringing us safely thus far. We thank you for bringing us through dangers seen and unseen. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to worship with you one more time in spirit and in truth. Even in this peculiar season, Father, we thank you because you have been faithful. 
Now, Lord, as you have allowed us to gather and you have appointed to me this grace to stand behind the sacred desk, I ask, Lord, have your way in this place. Let a word go forth that will bless your people and encourage them and enrich them that they may go forth to do all that you called them to do. And through it all, Father, we will give you all praise, glory, and honor. For you alone are worthy to be praised. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our supplication. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I read a story about a, a preacher. He was a poor preacher by the world standards. And he was contacted by the tax collectors to inform him or to find out how much money he owed the government. And the tax collector showed up and he wanted to calculate how much the minister owed. And the minister said to the tax collector, he said, you know, I'm a rich man. And the tax collector said, yeah, that's what we're trying to, to figure out. Let's, let's, let's look at your assets. And the preacher said, first of all, <laughs> I'm, I'm rich because I possess a savior who earned for me everlasting life and who prepared a place for me in his eternal home. He, he said that I'm rich because I have a virtuous wife, and the Bible says that her price is far beyond rubies. He said, added to these possessions, I'm healthy, and I have healthy and obedient children. I have a merry heart. And as he went through and listed all of his enrichments, the, the tax collector said, yes, yes, uh, preacher, you are indeed a rich man. He said, but ain't none of that tax. When, when Paul wrote this letter to the church at Corinth, Corinth was a wealthy church. You know, they, 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 they would, what preachers like to refer to as one of them silk stocking churches. Yeah, everybody rode nice. Everybody dressed nice. They had plenty of money. They, they had vacation homes and all that kind of stuff. They, they, they were rich, but they had some problems. They, they, they had factions, at least four factions in the church who were trying to be in charge. They had sexual immorality that was running through the church. Uh, they, 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 they had all kinds of challenges that came up. They, they were politically active and astute but yet they weren't having that kind of influence on the community. They, they, they had problems. But rather than come in and jump on the problems, Paul came in and emphasized the positive. And he told them, y'all rich. And they said, they're going, yeah, we know that. We, we, we know we riding nice. We got no money in the bank. We got 401k. No, 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 no. You got all that, but you're also rich in ways that you have not counted. All right. All right. I, I submit to you in 2022, as we look around in the midst of this pandemic, as we look at an uncertain future, when we're trying to figure out how we're going to go, people are scared to, to do what they ought to do, but they do what they want to do. When we're in this peculiar season, I want to remind you that you have been enriched 
by Jesus Christ. See, first thing I want to remind you of that you have uh, all of these riches and the source of these riches is Jesus Christ. See, first of all, God wants what's best for his children. His, his, his knowledge is, is such that it covers all of our lives and the lives that each one of us touch. His, his power and presence are such that when his conditions are met, whatever happens will ultimately be for the very best. All right. When, when you let him order your steps and guide your feet, everything you touch is going to be prosperous. All right. All right. See, the, the thing we have to remember is that God's riches and his promises are, are, are for riches and they are available for all people. Whoa. He just didn't set aside and say only certain folk going to get this. All right. But he made them available to everybody. Paul said in, in his letter to the Philippians, the, the fourth chapter and the 19th verse, he said to the church at Caesarea Philippi, my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. See, see when, 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 when we, when we uh, get in, in this situation, we, 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 we forget where the source of the supply is. There, there, there was a, a, a pastor who was at, having a difficult time at a church where he was planted, and because of uh, the, the circumstances that they were in, the church they let him know, Reverend, we can't give you a raise. You're just going to have to, 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 to suffer through this. We, 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 we just can't do that. And, and he was struggling, his car was broke down, he had children that he had to take care of. And out of the blue, somebody came along and said, Reverend, I own a car dealership. And God put on my heart to make an automobile available to you at no cost that you could use for your ministry. He was looking for a salary increase so he could buy a car. God sent him a car. Right. So we, we have to remember that, that, that my God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. May not be the way you think it's going to come, but God will keep his promises. All right. All right. See, see, we have to remember that, that he is the, the, the source of our supply. Second thing we have to remember is that the promise of these riches is that a person is enriched in everything. Often we get hung up on the material. Come on, preacher. And we miss all the other things that God has enriched us with. See, see, we have to remember that, that, that Christ makes a difference in every facet of your life. He, he makes a difference in what you want. Uh -huh. See, Paul said, I, I, I have learned to be content in whatever circumstance I'm in. Right. He said, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. Yeah. I've learned the secret of being content yeah. in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry. Whether living in plenty or in one. Yeah. See, see, we, we Paul said, I, I, I've learned to be content. Mm -hmm. I've learned to have a whole bunch of stuff, and then I've learned to have nothing. I've learned that in whatever state I'm in, I'm going to be content. If I drive an old car or a new car, as long as it's rolling, I'm content. If it break down, God got a plan for it. I'm content. Amen. Don't know what the doctor going to say, but whatever he says, God going to deliver me. I'm going to be content. Amen. We have to learn to accept that whatever the situation, God is obligated to keep his promises to you. Amen. Christ makes a difference in every aspect of your life. And, and, and then 
Paul went on to say to the, the church at Corinth, he, he said, and let's look at the verse, that ye in everything ye are enriched by him, get this, in all utterance and in all knowledge. Well, what, what does he mean by all utterance and all knowledge? All utterance is the outward expression of letting folks know that, 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 that God has blessed me. And all knowledge is the inward knowledge. I know that he's the source of my supply. I know he brought me from a mighty long way. I know he's opened doors that no man could shut and shut doors that no man could open. I, I, I know that whatever happens, God got me covered. And, 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 and when I get a chance to tell you, I'm going to tell you. Let me tell you what God did for me. I, you know, sometimes folks over there, you go bragging. No, 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 I ain't bragging. I'm just saying God been good to me. And you know what? He's been good to you. Every now and then, you need to hear yourself say, God been good to me. Every now and then, you got to count your blessings and name them one by one. Every now and then, you just got to stand up and realize God brought me from a mighty long way. Every now and then. And, and, and it, it applies not just to, to, to the material stuff. It applies not just to the financial stuff, but it applies in, to your, the husband and wife relationship. If you didn't stay married to anybody for any length of time, you ought to be giving God thanks. Thank him for every day he's sin. There's some folks who couldn't stay together five minutes. I done married folk and seemed like as soon as I I I I done got the little card and 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 and, and, and get ready to pay the bill for the gift we sent, they broke up. My mother used to tickle me. She would go to the store and buy toasters and you know the little Mama, why are you buying all that stuff? Well, I'm always getting invited to a wedding, son. You know, you want to bring the gift. Well, Mom, ain't nobody going to, that, 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 that's just a little $10 toaster. Look, son, some of them don't stay together that long. <laughs> <laughs> now, if they make it to the first anniversary, I'll bless them a little more. But right now, I'm letting them know I'm acknowledging, I'm praying for you. Our blessings and, and all utterance and all knowledge it applies to the husband and wife relationship, parent child relationships. Mm -hmm. I, I remember when, when, when my girls were young and, and I dreaded the teen years. I said, Lord, when they get to be teenagers. <laughs> and the blessing was it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. All right. Because God was gracious. Everybody said, oh, Reverend Jones, you did a good job. No, no, I ain't do nothing. I just said, Lord, have mercy on me. And he brought us through. And I ain't saying that every day was sweet. And some days, Kathy had to put the striped shirt on. Everybody pick a corn. But through it all, God kept us. He brought us. Not only in, in, in those family relationships, we ought to be thankful for our health. And, 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 and get this, you ought to be thankful if you're healthy. You ought to be thankful if, you, if you've been sick and God brought you back to health. See, sometimes folks say, well, you know, I, I, I ain't never been sick a day in my life. Praise the Lord. And then there's some folks in there say, you know, I rattled in gates. But through it all, God brought me back. You need to thank him for the good and the bad. You see, it was, it was those challenges, I, I'm convinced, those difficult times are the ones that make you think and make you count. Ooh, God been good to me. It was those times, those challenges that God demonstrated how much he loved you. Thank you, Lord, for my Thank you. I'm, I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. See, see, we, 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 we think about enrichment they're only dealing with our uh, income and expenses. Well. But see, the enrichment that Paul was talking about was all aspects 
but most importantly, the spiritual aspects of your life. Some of us have been so fearful that we've neglected the spiritual portion. We're so afraid that we forgot about uh, the assembling of yourselves together. You know, it's strength when we come together. It's a blessing to look out there and see some folks who accept you unconditionally. It's a blessing to look around and, 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 and see that down through the years how God has blessed folk and, and how they still function. And we need to be reminded of that, especially in this season that we're in. God didn't intend for us to be, live in little cocoons and we only check in every now and then. But he intended us to be social beings. That's a part of our enrichment. I'm almost three. I ain't going to be long with that. Somebody said, there you go again. See, the source of our riches are in Jesus Christ. The promise of these riches is that a person will be enriched in everything. Okay, well, that's well and fine, preacher. But how do we get these enrichments? What you need to do? I, 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 I want I, somebody out there saying, "All right, preach. I, I need to be enriched. What do I need to do to be enriched?" Mm. See, the first thing that you got to do, you got to surrender everything to All Jesus right. Christ. All right. That's, right. That's a hard song for some folks to sing. All to Jesus I surrender. Mm. I'm a lay that altar. Mm. And then some of us, as soon as the prayer is over, we pick it up and take it back home with us. You got to lay it all down. You got to lay down the good and the bad. All that I am, all that I ever hope to be, I surrender all of my money. I surrender my car that I just got that still got the new car smell. That ain't my car, that's God's car. That house he allowed me to live in, it ain't my house, that's God's house. The clothes on your back that you look good in, they ain't your clothes that God's clothes. All of it belongs to him. Amen. If, if you want to be enriched, you got to give up everything. The second thing that you need to do, you have to have an abiding faith in Jesus and the promises as he set forth in God's word. When what are you saying, preacher? I got to believe that just what Jesus said, he's going to do just what he's going to do. I, I, I believe when he said, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you may be also. And you know where I'm going. And guess what? I'm coming back to receive you with me, that where I am, there you may be also. And everybody said, well, you know, he ain't come back yet. I beg the difference. He come back every day for somebody. Amen. Check with a few on him. He coming back to your neighbor. Maybe he coming back. I, I want to be ready when he comes. I, I, I want to receive a promise when he comes. I, 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 I want to walk around Jerusalem just like John. I, 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 I want to take off this corruptible body and put on an incorruptible body. I, I want to lay down my weapons and study war no more. I, I, I know I've got somewhere to go. Why? Because Jesus promised. If I'm to be enriched, i got to lay down everything, all aspects of my life. If I'm to be enriched, I have to have the faith, that abiding faith, that what Jesus said he's going to do, he's going to do it just like he said it. Don't know when, don't know where, don't know how, but his promises are sure. I got to believe it, and I got to live like I believe it. And most importantly, if I'm going to be enriched by these riches that Jesus gives us, I must be obedient to God's will after determining what it is. All right, all right, preacher. Well, Reverend, that's the challenge. How do we know what God's will is? It's in the book. All right. It's here. Yeah, it is. There's some things we ought not have to pray about. There's some things we know about God. 
We know he wants us to love everybody. Even though he knows it's not going to be easy, he still expects us to love everybody. What did Jesus say? They will know you by your love one for another. When they asked Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? Jesus said, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. And the second one that's just as important, love your neighbor like you love yourself. Amen. And they want to ask the question, who my neighbor? I found it quite interesting that, that when the judge sends those three men down in South Georgia yes, and he told them, he said, you know, you got to love your neighbor. Mm -hmm. And what you did wasn't neighborly. All right. All right. I ain't talking about the folk who live in your community, yes, right. but everybody you interact with, we all living on the same planet. Yes. We all going back to the God that created us. That's my neighbor. I can't get along with you down here. I'm going to have trouble on the other side because you're my neighbor. Amen. We got to love one another. We got to know that it's God's will. And I get this, get this. Yes, Jesus said the poor you have with you always. Yes, we, we know that they're going to be sick folk and infirm folk. But, but, but most importantly, what is God's will? Is it that we feed everybody? Or is it that everybody be saved? Amen. If I'm feeding somebody, it's not just feeding you. That, that ain't going to do nothing for me. What, what it does is provide an opportunity for me to tell you God be good to me. It provides an opportunity for me to let you know that there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. When, when, when I feed you, when I meet you at your need, that gives me an opportunity to establish the relationship so I can tell you that 2,000 years ago, God's son, who came down through 42 generations, who was tempted in all things but sinned not, who was taken out of the, the, the depths of the world, who walked the earth as a natural man, was tempted in all things but sinned not, that they lied on him, cheated him, talked about him, and mistreated him, took him and beat him all night long, accused him for crimes that he did not commit, sentenced him to die on the cross for stuff he didn't do, hung him between two thieves, nailed him high on that cross, and while he hung there on the cross, he was still praying for us. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. While he was in the cross, on the cross, dying, one of the thieves said, if you are who you say you are, come down off of the cross and take us with you. The other was saying, you fool. We're here because we're supposed to be here. We deserve to be here. But this man didn't do nothing. He said, Lord, when you're coming to your kingdom, remember me. And I ain't asking for nothing. I ain't asking for a mansion. Just call my name when you get there. Jesus said to him, this day you will be with me in paradise. He died on that cross. He took him down and laid him in a bar tomb. He laid there all day Friday. All night Friday night. All day Saturday. All night Saturday night. But early on Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. He got up and secured my faith. He got up and went and prepared a place for me. He got up, took his own blood to pay my sin debt. He did it for me. He did it for you. And guess what? It's available to whoever wants to receive it. God's will is that we tell the story how he blessed us. Tell the story how he made a way for us. Tell the story that he's ready to bless you. Tell the story that God's been good to me. Tell it. Tell it. Christ 
and how he has blessed us unless we focus our attention on him. Amen. Because he blessed us to be a blessing. I challenge you in this season more than ever, go be a blessing. Go and encourage somebody. Remind a scared person that God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but one of power and of love and of a sound mind. Remind them that he is our fortress and a very present help in time of trouble. Remind them that God promised never to leave us or forsake us. You're rich. Now I challenge you. Go share the wealth. Yeah. 
six angels will attend us. Help and comfort give you to your journey. committee link will be going out uh, for you all to log in uh, so that we can discharge our stewardship. Uh, second item, we want to remind you all about the Legacy Tree Program and we are taking uh, requests and applications for the purchase of a leaf in commemoration or memory of an individual uh, to be placed in the uh, foyer at the Family Life Center. Uh, those that uh, wish to inquire more about it, please contact us or contact Sister Bernice Frazier. Uh, you can reach us on our website, Bethel Tuskegee. Uh, no, our email address is Bethel Tuskegee at gmail.com. And uh, you can uh, request information and we can uh, send one out to you. Final thing, uh, we are announcing uh, the position of administrative assistant. It is a part-time position uh, that will uh, be working here at the church. Uh, the announcement has been posted on our website, BethelTuskegee.org. And if you are interested in applying, please download the application, complete it, and we will get back to you. Uh, the announcement went up last week. It will be uh, up for the next two weeks. And uh, if you are so inclined, we want to give you the opportunity to submit an application uh, for uh, this position. Let us remain prayerful. Let us keep each other lifted up in prayer. And let us pray that God will deliver us from this pandemic and this virus. Amen. In the meantime, wear your masks. Amen. Wash your hands. Get your shots. Get tested. And you have opportunity to do so. Amen. Amen.